Alright, hello everyone, my name is Pig Puncher, and welcome to another commentary video. I know some of you guys don't like this type of video, but I'm having a lot of fun right now, and when I get inspired to do something, I try to get it done as soon as possible to make sure that I don't lose motivation before it's finished. Now, this video is going to be very political, more political than I think I've ever gotten on this channel before, and if you'd rather not know my political views, it might be best that you don't watch this. However, if you have seen both my videos I made on Notch, you may already have an idea of what my politics are. If you're still here, buckle up and get comfortable because this is going to be a long one. So, as the title says, this video is about anti-SJWs. Before we can get into that though, first we have to ask, what is an SJW? Well, SJW stands for Social Justice Warrior, which Wikipedia defines as a pejorative term for an individual who promotes socially progressive views including feminism, civil rights, and multiculturalism, as well as identity politics. The accusation that someone is an SJW carries implications that they are pursuing personal validation rather than any deep-seated conviction and in engaging in disingenuous arguments. A more simplified definition would be someone who claims they actually care about civil rights but actually wants attention or a reason to complain instead. And when they complain, it usually looks something like this. Many popular examples of SJWs include Anita Sarkeesian, a highly controversial video game critic who has received much criticism in the past for several scandals including raising an insanely high amount of money for a YouTube series that could never require such funds, as well as claiming in the past that she doesn't really like video games, or play them, or even understand them despite now building a career on being a huge critic of them. I'm gonna show you a remix that I just finished this weekend and no one else has seen. <laughs> one person has seen it soundtrack of one song, except I'm doing video games. So it's not exactly a fandom. I'm not a fan of video games. I actually had to learn a lot about video games in the process of making this. Other examples include Francesca Ramsey, Steve Shives, Zoe Quinn, and so many more that it would be impossible for me to list them all in one video. Common criticism of these people usually goes along the lines of they are reactionaries, they are regressive, and that they are the true racist, sexist, or overall bigots. However, this video isn't about the SJWs themselves, but the community that has been built on criticizing them and debunking their claims. These people generally call themselves anti-SJWs, and this community has gotten absolutely massive on YouTube over the last four years. You would think that a group of people dedicated to debunking a generally left-leaning ideology would be all conservative, but you would be wrong. Anti-SJWs can be found basically everywhere on the political spectrum. In fact, three of the most popular, Chris Reagan, Armored Skeptic, and Shoe on Head, have vehemently claimed in the past that they are liberals, and I believe them. From watching their videos, you can tell that their personal political beliefs are in fact pretty left-leaning. When asked why they criticize so many people on the left, they usually say that it's because they are liberals and that they want the left to be better. Oftentimes, SJWs will call these people bigots and Nazis despite them actually being liberals. This has led them to claiming that the terms such as Nazi have become so overused that they don't mean anything anymore. These individuals also often like to claim that their videos aren't really meant to make any political statements and are above all else meant to be entertainment. This is pretty clear when you watch them. While there is a political message, the main attraction is meant to be the over-the-top personalities and reactions of SJWs in the videos themselves. However, this is a big community, and not everyone in it has the same political stances. Another huge anti-SJW, Sargon of Akkad, makes content that is meant to make political points rather than be zany and entertaining. His videos are much more calm, heavily scripted, and there are usually not many jokes in them. He's claimed he is a liberal in the past, but has repeatedly endorsed several conservative movements and candidates such as Donald Trump. I think it's safe to say that he is a quite a bit further right than Chris, Shu, and Skeptic, but that doesn't mean they aren't all friends. As you'll see in this video, there are not many degrees of separation between these center-left personalities and extremely far-right ones, but we'll get to that more later. If we go a bit further right, we'll find massively popular political commentators such as Dave Rubin. Dave Rubin is by all means a center-left liberal, but he gets a lot of heat for having very controversial figures on his show, The Rubin Report. When he has one of these controversial figures on his show, he will typically interview them on their beliefs. However, Ruben is rarely equipped to debate the views of his guests, so he oftentimes 
comes out of each show having only platformed his guests and give them a larger audience to preach to. If we go a bit further, you have people like Steven Crowder. Crowder is a conservative and host of Louder with Crowder, a show where he brings on guests and interviews them. Crowder does essentially the same thing Dave Rubin does, but to a much higher degree. While Rubin will often sit on the fence in a debate, Crowder is a conservative and usually won't challenge the ideas of any conservative he has on his show. He is also known for going to public settings and setting up a booth that you might recognize and debating random people who approach him. Most of his debate tactics are pretty dishonest. He usually has papers with sources to help him debate while the person he's debating is left with no resources in front of a crowd of onlookers. When Crowder is actually challenged in a debate, he will oftentimes resort to calling out very small mistakes made by his opponent that have nothing to do with the argument, such as one guy who called his argument autistic, uh, something Crowder latched onto. Okay, well, I don't believe there should be a part of life for someone with guns to come in if I don't pay for Timmy's health care. I just disagree with that. If you don't pay taxes, you're going to have uh, other forms of violence that arise spontaneously. This, this sort of autistic libertarian idea of, oh, you can, you can have a non-aggression... Stop it, stop it. He's been watching Matt Damon videos. <laughs> this idea of a non-aggression principle is, is just fantasy, okay? You have to have Describe some... to me, you said autistic. Yeah. This is very civil until you brought that up. Define autistic here. Next, we have Jordan Peterson, a Canadian professor of psychology at the University of Toronto who became famous after this video of him being yelled at by one of his students went viral. I want to go talk to Peterson. <laughs> Peterson, do you have any comments on the Nazi presence at your protest? The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest, do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like Nazis. While I may disagree with Peterson on basically every level, he was definitely treated unfairly by this student, and I don't think he's a Nazi. However, he is a right-wing Christian who thinks gay marriage, casual sex, and for that matter, sex before marriage is a sin, and thinks women should stay in the kitchen and never seek out careers outside the house because supposedly that's where they are happier. These views were included in his best-selling book, 12 Rules for Life, which was even endorsed by PewDiePie. Peterson is also known for his famous criticism of a bill that was passed by the Canadian government called Bill C-16. This bill added transgender people under the same protections as gay people, people of color, and women so that they could not be denied a job or housing because they fall under one of these categories. However, Peterson claimed that this bill would make it possible for transgender people to have random citizens fined or jailed for misgendering them. Eventually, the Canadian government had to speak out and show that he was misrepresenting the law, but the damage was already done. Because of Peterson, millions of people now believe that the majority of transgender folks are authoritarians who want to make it illegal to misgender them. The law has been passed for three and a half years now, and no one has been fined or arrested for accidentally misgendering someone, by the way. Beyond Jordan Peterson, we have Ben Shapiro, a conservative political commentator who is known for coining the term, facts don't care about your feelings. His favorite target for this phrase are transgender people who he believes are mentally ill and are just lying to themselves. Much of his popularity comes from purposefully trying to bait and insult the left since he knows his beliefs are so ridiculous that people only take his side in a debate if he can make his opponents look as emotional as possible. He was also criticized for misrepresenting Bill C-16 as well and spreading the same lies as Jordan Peterson. If we go even further right than that, you'll have people like Baring and Andy Worski. Andy Worski is a popular anti-SJW who's known for doing live streams where he has discussions with many political pundits, though they are usually pretty conservative. In fact, they are oftentimes much more conservative than even he is. He has been criticized in the past for having several self-proclaimed white nationalists and race realists on his show who have repeatedly pushed for what they see as white countries be made into white ethnostates. A white ethnostate is a country that has killed or deported all people of color in order to make white people the majority. While having these people on his show and debating them wouldn't be a problem at all, the criticism usually comes from the fact that he rarely challenges them when they come onto his show, so he's essentially giving them a platform to reach out to a wider audience. Baring, however, received a fair amount of criticism for misrepresenting a poll done by the Australian government that wanted to determine the public's majority opinion on whether or not gay marriage should be made legal in Australia. Baring urged his audience to vote no, since if gay marriage is made legal, he claimed it would be a slippery slope to making it illegal to criticize gay people. This was obviously not true, but the damage was already done. His audience most likely couldn't have been swayed by any announcement made by the Australian government to disprove Baring's views. From here, we have people like Lauren Southern and Gavin McInnes of a Canadian 
news organization called The Rebel. Gavin McInnes has been criticized in the past for helping spread a conspiracy called The Great Replacement. This is the idea that white people are slowly dying out because of interracial relationships along with a falling birth rate among white families. While these conspiracies may sound so crazy that no one who actually matters would ever believe in them, popular online comedian JonTron was heavily criticized in the past for spreading these beliefs. Why is it so important that whites remain the majority in the United States? What is it about being white that's so important? Look, I'm, uh, I'm actually not making the argument that whites should remain the majority in the United States. I'm simply arguing that it's clear that whites are not allowed to speak up against their demographic um, oblivion. I mean, it's not you know, oblivion. It, there is no oblivion. Nobody is walking around killing all okay, the white people. Okay, says you, says you. However, after a long break from making content, he has returned to YouTube and is doing even better than before. On top of that, several of JonTron's friends, such as Ego Raptor of Game Grumps, Psychic Pebbles, and even the before mentioned Chris Raygun, have defended him tooth and nail despite what he said in the last clip being a very clear and very tamming statement. Despite having the support of a lot of young gamers, Gavin McInnes has also been criticized many years ago, in fact, for saying this on his show. For those of you who are normal adults, you probably don't know that Gamergate is the idea that feminism and political correctness should work its way into video games. The gamers, that's a movement, guys who play video games have a name for themselves. There's a layer of patheticness here though that no one is talking about. Namely, I don't care if video games are sexist or not sexist or politically correct. Video games are for little kids. Why are adults playing video games. My brother-in-law got my kids a Batman game for uh, for Christmas. They can't play it. It's for adults only. Batman? <laughs> when I was a little kid, we watched Batman on TV because we wanted to be tough and fight bad guys. Now you're 32 and you're sitting there, I'm Batman, I, I'm Superman, I can fly. Look at my Wolverine shirt. He has claws. You read comic books? That is for people who are special, okay? The, the, in the old days, you lived in the basement because you were mentally handicapped. When we saw 12-year-olds playing Star Wars with nine-year-olds, we went, poor bastard, oh well. Uh, I guess he'll be living with his mommy. Yeah, I guess they kind of forgot about that one. What about Lauren Southern, though, who has also pushed the Great Replacement Conspiracy? Well, she got a lot of backlash a while back for getting on a boat and attempting to stop rescue ships from saving Syrian refugees and bringing them back to Europe, an act which she was banned from the UK for. Oh, wait, she was lying about that and was just trying to play the victim. She said she was permanently banned from the UK. The government issued a statement that she was instead refused entry for specific purposes only and reports of her being banned were false. Despite all this, she also still receives a lot of support and her YouTube channel has over 600,000 subscribers. There's not much further right you can go than the rebel media, but around here, you would find folks like Richard Spencer. Spencer is considered the modern day king of white supremacy. He's the man who invented the term alt-right, which he says is a movement centered around pride in one's white identity. He's also spoken out against social justice warriors in the past, which is why he's included in this community. He hit headlines for the first time in 2016 for this little gem right here, by the way. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! <laughs> So, what is my point in telling you this? Well, what if I told you these anti-SJWs, and the very SJWs they claim to be better than, to be more composed and intelligent than, are the same? These anti-SJWs are typically just as crazy, emotional, and irrational as the SJWs themselves. For example, Chris Raygun, Shuan Head, and Armored Skeptic all claim that they want game developers and film directors to be given creative freedom to make whatever kinds of stories they want, but when a movie comes out with all female main characters, or a game has a lesbian main character, they call it forced diversity. Don't get me wrong, the new Ghostbusters was terrible, but the main criticism by the anti-SJW community was the inverse of the criticism given by these SJWs, but with the same amount of reactionary bullshit in both their arguments. What about Sargon of Akkad, who had this reaction to Bernie Sanders' claim that Trump was dividing America? President Trump, you made a big mistake. By trying to divide us up by race, religion, gender, and nationality, you actually brought us closer with 300,000 retweets. Fuck! Fuck you! Fuck 
You Bernie, fuck off. Trump did not try to divide you by race, religion, and gender and nationality. You are the cunts dividing people by race and gender. Or what about his reaction to seeing the teenage she in her new Netflix show isn't curvy or sexy enough? You guys aren't going to be remembered. Millennials seem to be low effort, low talent, and that's fine. I, I kind of feel bad for them. Now imagine gender roles being the top of your list of priorities. How easy your life must be. <laughs> You're not going to invent anything of your own though, are you? And anything of your own that you do invent is just going to look poor. It's not going to appeal to most people because you can't invent anything new and you need to bastardize it, then okay, sure, you do go nuts, I don't care. It's not gonna, it's not gonna destroy gender though, is it? It's not gonna destroy the patriarchy. It's not gonna, <laughs> it's not gonna be popular. It's not gonna, it's not gonna change the world. It's just gonna be one of those sort of insular things that your little communities do. Anyway, good luck millennials. One day you'll realize that cats are no substitute for children. Yeah, starting to sound a lot like the complaints of those SJWs, huh? But it gets even worse. There is a rabbit hole to the alt-right that is formed by these personalities, whether they like it or not. Someone who starts watching Chris Raygun will likely watch Sargon because of his shoutouts, then become a fan of Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro. Maybe after that, they make the jump to watching Andy Worski and see Lauren Southern on his show. Then they start believing in the Great Replacement. Then maybe they get angry, maybe even radicalized. It doesn't happen to everybody, but this is exactly what happened with the Christchurch shooter who killed 50 Muslims and cited the Great Replacement as his reason for doing it. When anyone points this out, most anti-SJWs like to claim that this is guilt by association, and they can't be blamed for their fans or the people they associate with. This is an issue that goes a lot deeper and deserves its own videos, so keep an eye out for that one when I make one. So, what happens when someone calls this out? Well, take a look at Dusty Smith, who made a video calling out the very things I mentioned here. Anti-SJWs are the new SJW. The anti-SJW community has gotten huge on YouTube in the last two years. Lots of channels have become extremely popular, making fun of SJWs and explaining how liberal cucks like myself are trying to destroy Western society. The anti-SJW response to him was vicious, and they never addressed a single one of his points. They just used personal insults and called him old. Anytime Dusty would make so much as a tweet criticizing this community, they would call him an irrelevant attention seeker. I mean, really, how can anyone still be on Chris Reagan's side here? These are literally rice gum level responses from these so called well composed intellectuals. Irrelevant. So, yeah, chances are if the big anti SJW YouTubers see this video, then there will be a massive bomb of hate dropped on it. But no matter how many dislikes, death threats, or insults are thrown my way, I won't stop standing up for what is right and what I believe in. That's going to be it for me today, guys. If you like this video, leave a like, leave your opinions in the comments. If you're new, leave a sub to keep yourself updated on the channel and help it grow. You can join my fan discord or talk to me directly from the link in the description too. Alright everyone, Pig Puncher, out.